Welcome back to Book Break. I'm here today in Tales on Moon Lane, which is this absolutely gorgeous children's bookshop in Hun Hill. I've made a new friend here, Mrs. Huglas Douglas, and I'm going to talk to you in this video about the beautiful illustrated books that you'll want to keep throughout your life. Some of them you might remember from your own childhood, and some of them you might want to buy for the young people in your life now, or even just for your own collection because they're so gorgeous. So I'm going to go roughly chronologically through these books, starting with the ones that made me feel so nostalgic that I remember reading or having read to me as a child, building up to some of the fantastic new ones. So starting with a really lovely colourful classic, Good Night Moon by Margaret Wise Brown, illustrated by Clement Hurd. So this one made me feel so nostalgic. This is about a little bunny going to sleep and saying goodnight to everything in his room. And it's just got such gorgeous, bold use of colour, lovely rhyming, all the way through to this beautiful, gorgeous, sleepy last page, which was the only page I realised I actually didn't recognise, and I guess you probably never saw it as a child because we had all already fallen asleep by that point. Next, another favourite from my childhood, Where the Wild Things Are, written and illustrated by Marie Sendak. So this one is about a young boy called Max who is sent to bed with no supper, and his room then transforms into this whole other world, and he ends up sailing off to this island where he meets the wild things. And these are just, it's so such an imaginative story, these amazing drawings of these weird and wonderful creatures. It's like being inside a dream. And I absolutely loved Max is always wearing this little wolf suit. I wanted one just like it. It is no surprise this book has been so beloved through the years. And then of course there's The Tiger Who Came to Tea, written and illustrated by Judith Kerr. So this is about a little girl called Sophie who's having tea with her mother in the kitchen when the doorbell rings and it's a tiger. A very kind tiger but who eats all the food and drink in the house. And again, these images have just so stuck with me through the years. Particularly, they're so much fun, look, particularly this one of Sophie hugging the tiger. I think it would probably actually be very dangerous for me to meet a tiger in the wild because my impression of tigers is they're all like this one. And another one that really reminds me of falling asleep as a child is Peace at Last, written and illustrated by Jill Murphy. So this one is about Mr. Bear trying to find some peace and quiet so he can go to sleep, but all of the rooms in his house are too noisy. In his bedroom, his wife is snoring, in the living room, the cuckoo clock is going off. So he just goes through all the different rooms in the house, even out into the garden, just to try and find some peace and quiet. And in this one, it's the fact that he can't get to sleep. I remember just sending me to sleep so much as a child, and there he is at the end, finding some peace at last. Now, Dear Zoo, written and illustrated by Rod Campbell, this is one of the early Lift the Flat books. So this is all about trying to find the perfect pet from the zoo. And each page has a crate that you can open and find out what animal is underneath and why it's not quite right as a pet. So it's really hands-on, interactive, a lot of fun guessing what animal is going to appear under each flap. Until, of course you get the perfect animal right at the end. And one of the most beloved picture books is The Gruffalo by Julie Donaldson and illustrated by Axel Scheffer. So this is about a little mouse who manages to survive in the woods against snakes and foxes and owls and even a gruffalo, who is this wonderfully imaginative creature with terrible claws and knobbly knees and purple prickles all down his back. And even now you will still find so many gruffalo toys and clothes and there's a film and a stick stage play, all because of how wonderfully Julie Donaldson and Axel Scheffler brought this strange and wonderful creature to life. And now for some more recent books that are bound to go on to become classics, starting with Little Red by Beth and Wolven. I absolutely love this one. It's this really dark, funny retelling of Little Red Riding Hood. I absolutely love this illustration here of the girl rolling her eyes at the bad wolf's disguise. She's not quite as easily fooled as the girl in the original, this one. And I just love the illustrations throughout this. They're all black, white and red, really bold. And Beth and Wolven has gone on to write quite a few retellings of fairy tales and she's got a book coming out later this year called I Can Catch a Monster, which is a really fun adventure story. Tidy, written and illustrated by Emily Gravitt, is such a funny little story about a badger who gets obsessed with tidying up the forest where he lives. So it starts with just picking up a few stray leaves and then turns into digging up all the trees and eventually he has to realise maybe things were better the way they were. And again, I just love these illustrations. I particularly love all his little facial expressions. They're so well drawn. And Emily Gravitt has another book coming out later this year called Too Much Stuff, which has a lot of the same characters and the same setting 
interesting, but this time introduces two magpies who can't stop hoarding useful stuff for their nest. So I can't wait to see how gorgeous and funny those illustrations are going to be as well. And another of my favourites is Alfred and Albert, A Love Story, written and illustrated by Morag Hood, which is such a sweet little story about these two aardvarks called Alfred and Albert, who live next door but have never met each other, and the little bird who tries to match make them. And I love this style of illustration. It is so simple and colourful, but manages to paint such a rich world. I love all the little details, like this little bird's really cross face when his plans keep getting foiled. I will just collect everything that more I could creates because these are just so beautiful. Now the next one is for slightly older children than the other books mentioned in this video but this is definitely one to keep throughout your life and that is Suffragette, The Battle for Equality, written and illustrated by David Roberts. And this is this really informative history of the suffragettes with these gorgeous illustrations throughout to bring the whole story to life. There is just so much going on in these pictures and I really love how well researched this book is. It goes beyond the stereotypes of suffragettes to include working class women and also to tell diverse stories from around the world. And then back to books for younger readers, I've got here Anim Alphabet, written by Julia Donaldson, illustrated by Sharon King Chai, which is just one of the most gorgeous books I've ever laid my hands on. It's an alphabet of animals that encourages you to guess as you go along and it gives you clues as you go through the alphabet, like who is prettier than an ant and you get a little peephole here with a clue of what's coming next and then the answer is a butterfly and the illustrations in this are just so beautiful and it's such a hands-on interactive book. This one is just already a classic. And Sharon King Chai then went on to write and illustrate her next book, Starbird, with the same absolutely beautiful illustration style. So this time it's this fable about a magical starbird escaping the clutches of the moon king who has him in a cage. And so by day we see him journeying through the world and by night he hides in these gorgeous nighttime scenes where you have to find the bird hidden in these silhouettes. And it's got this beautiful use of foil throughout. It's like the whole book just shimmers. Particularly my favourite is this final page with the night sky sky just full of stars. It's just absolutely magical. And then finally, A Hat for Mr Mountain by Sujin Kwak. This is about a little girl called Nara who makes hats for all the animals until one day Mr Mountain says that he wants a hat to protect him from the winter snow. So she has to try all these different materials because her woolly hat just shrinks in the rain, her hat made of leaves doesn't work because the animals just keep nibbling at it. And one of my favourite things about this book is, again, the illustrations. Just how fun and busy they are. There's so many details on every page that you can just keep returning to throughout your childhood. And even as an adult, I keep staring at it and noticing new fun little details. So do leave us a comment and let us know which other illustrated books that you have kept throughout your life. We'd love to know some of your favourites. And of course, do give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. I will leave the link to the Tales on Moon Lane website in the description box below, so definitely come and pay it a visit. And do hit that subscribe button for new videos every week. Coming up next week, we've got a video on the classics that you never knew were so funny. See you next time.